Today's case is on neuroradiology. We are presented with imaging in a 79-year-old male patient who presents to the emergency department with a history of fevers and headache. We start off with a non-contrast CT scan of the patient's brain. Starting at the bottom and making our way to the top, we can immediately see there, there is a large abnormality in the right side of the patient's brain localized to the right temporal lobe. The abnormality is characterized by a well-circumscribed ovoid lesion with a thick hyperdense wall, low density center, and there is also low density changes in the surrounding cerebral parenchyma. There is mass effect resulting in effacement of the sulci of the right cerebral hemisphere. There is left deviation of the midline. You can see that the Fox is deviated to the left. There's asymmetry of the ventricles with the right ventricle effaced. The left ventricle is normal. There is also uncle herniation of the right mesotemporal lobe. The foramen magnum is clear, so there is no tonsillar herniation. We don't see any other abnormality within the brain. So the differential diagnosis for this lesion, particularly in a context of fevers and headache, our primary consideration is that of a cerebral abscess. Other differentials to consider, however, are less likely in this case, includes a primary cerebral neoplasm such as a glioblastoma multiforme. We can also consider metastasis from a primary source spreading into the brain. Our next investigation is a post-contrast CT scan. This is a quick and easy scan to be performed in the emergency department and is the most commonly perform next step in a case of suspected cerebral abscess. Following contrast, you can see that there is enhancement of the vasculature of the brain. There is also contrast within the dual venous sinuses. And the cerebral parenchyma is globally brighter than on the pre-contrast study. Now, going back to our lesion, we can see that there is avid enhancement of the lesion in the right frontal, in the right temporal lobe. It, it, the lesion forms a complete ring. It's important to note that the lesion is closely related to the right lateral ventricle, but there is no abnormality of the right ventricle. Namely, there is no enhancement of the ependymal surface and there is no evidence of any material layering within the occipital horns of the ventricle. Our next modality of choice is a MRI. This is a diffusion weighted image in the axial plane in the same patient. On DWI imaging, we can see that the lesion has avid increased DWI signal within the center of the lesion. On the ADC map, corresponds with hypo intensity. Overall, the findings are consistent with a cerebral abscess. Now, cerebral abscesses are a focal prolent collection within the brain. The usual source is via hematogenous spread via the blood to the brain. Infection can also reach the brain by direct infection from the paranasal sinuses or the mastoid air cells. Patients with cerebral abscesses present with fevers, headache, raised intracranial pressure, seizures, or other focal neurology. Investigations 
namely imaging to perform, includes CT brain, CT brain with contrast, and MRI with particular attention to diffusion weighted imaging. The treatment for cerebral abscesses usually require operative management. Also, intravenous antibiotics are also required. Thanks for listening. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment below on what you'd like to see next, and also feel free to subscribe. I'll be uploading more videos 